Hello everybody, my name is Roderick Justice and I'm the producing artistic director of the Children's Theater of Cincinnati. And today we are going to have a princess reunion with the actresses who make up our ensemble of princesses in our production of Sleeping Beauty, which is streaming now. Hello ladies! Oh, it's so good to have all of you here for this wonderful princess reunion. Uh, let's take some time and I want each of you to introduce yourself and the characters that you portray in Sleeping Beauty. And we'll start up with Lauren. Hi, my name is Lauren. I played the fairy godmother Trinhilda and I also played Cinderella and I was a blonde then. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Jordan. I played Brynhilda in The Little Mermaid. Hey guys, Michaela here. Um, I played Snow White and the fairy godmother Brynhilda. Hi, I'm Ashley. I played the godmother Brynhilda and Princess Gerda, the future Snow Queen. Hi, I'm Renee and I played the princess Rapunzel and the fairy godmother Brynhilda. And all the way down there, that is my great friend Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Hi, I'm Jenna. I played Princess Aurora, otherwise known as Rory. <laughs> so ladies, have you all seen uh, Sleeping Beauty is now streaming? Yeah. Yes. So it'd be great to hear uh, when you received the call that you were going to play your role, what was running through your head, yeah. Michaela? Yeah, um, I remember getting the email and seeing like, it's like offer and then it says, you know, Princess Snow White. And I was like, Snow White, got it. Okay, I didn't ever think I'd be playing a princess with fair skin, usually. And it was just so exciting to be able to play a princess I never thought that I would have been able to do. And I'm so thankful that Children's Theater allowed diverse princesses in their company. So, what about you, uh, Jordan? I have always loved Little Mermaid. She's always been my favorite princess. So, when I found out I got to play her, I was so excited to be able to bring her to life. And Ashley. So when I first got the email, I was I was kind of in shock because I originally wasn't going to audition at all because it was a princess show. So I was like, oh, there's no part for me. I got the callback notification. So I was like, oh, it'll be good practice. Maybe there's like an ensemble role. So actually when I got the email, I was <laughs> I had to go back in the the character breakdown because I was like, who is Princess Gerda? Because I wasn't, I didn't really think that I was like auditioning for a princess role at all. Um, so I was, I was in complete shock, but I was so excited. I never thought that I would get to really be in a show where I would play a princess in any capacity. So um, that was extremely exciting for me. What about you, Lauren? Uh, uh, Sleeping Beauty was the first show I had ever gotten an offer from, from uh, the Children's Theater, and I've heard so many wonderful things about the theater, and Cinderella is, was like my favorite movie growing up, the 1950s one, when she's like looking in the water at her dress, so it was, it was so exciting to do that, and also knowing that it was going to be a princess ensemble. I thought that was such a cool, neat concept that there would be more than just one princess that uh, kids could look up to in the audience. How about you, Renee? Well, when I first got the call, I was shocked because I never thought I'd be Rapunzel. You know, she's bubbly, she's super pink. And I thought, oh, I hope they don't make me blonde. <laughs> but they did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. And Jenna. I was so happy because similar to Lauren, I had been auditioning for TCT since I was really young performer. And this was my first chance to work at TCT. So I was, I was so happy about that. And then, I mean, obviously excited to embody a new version of this well-known princess. That was pretty cool. That's a great segue. So I'd love to hear if you had a first you know gut reaction when you read the script like what was going through your mind what did you feel yes Lauren yeah um growing up I was a really typical girly girl like I grew up like watching the Disney princess movies and you know every single happy ending in those stories not not all of them but most of them the happy ending is finding your prince getting married and that's that and just reading a story 
where at the very end, the girls were just like, eh, you're cute. Like, yeah, maybe I'll marry you, but I'm going to like work on me right now and hang out with my best friends and just do me right now. And I think having a story like that when I was really young with princesses in it would have been really like life changing for me, honestly, and really, really important to learn. Yes, Jenna. I was really excited about the relationship between Rory and Philip and how they share so many interesting ideas and interests that are the things that set them apart from the other groups that they're a part of. When you just get to find a community, even if it's one other person who um, makes you feel at home, like that's what's really important about relationships, not some of the things that maybe traditional fairy tales would want us to focus on. It focuses on like their friendship more than anything, which is really special and I think valuable and true. Yes, Michaela. Mine's a little less uh, less deep, but I remember reading uh, the princess school scene and just knowing that that was going to be like a fierce dance number. <laughs> and being like, I cannot wait to get in the room and do that number. Um, so that was probably like my first reaction just with that scene. I was like, I knew that we were going to be like this powerhouse princess ensemble and it was just going to be gorgeous. I was so excited for that part. Uh, yeah, similar to Michaela, I like to, whenever I get the script, I flip through and my first question is like, when do I get to dance? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was really surprised because I, I was kind of confused how there were so many princesses in a show about Sleeping Beauty. So once I read it, I was like, oh, okay, this is really interesting. This is nothing like, this is nothing like what I was imagining or thought that I was auditioning for, I was like very pleasantly surprised. I think my gut reaction the first uh, time I received a draft was, I cannot wait for every young girl and young boy to see this story unfold um, and see people that not only are going through what they're going through right now, it's such a relevant story set in a fairy tale for young uh, girls and young boys. We, we've got Prince Philip as well, who is, who is not your traditional prince uh, in, in a world full of expectations. And, and one of the first songs I heard was uh, Wake Up. And I thought, oh, this is such a wonderful moment, not only for young boys and young girls to hear, but for parents to hear. Uh, and what their expectations are and what society wants us to be is not cookie cutter. You're not the same as me. You're who you can be. And so it, for me, it was a very exciting um, first read, first reaction. Um, I was very anxious about this show uh, all season. And then, of course, you know, when we reveal a big 30 foot dragon at the end, <laughs> that's kind of awesome as well. Hey, hey Jenna. How did you relate to Rory? Anything from your childhood that you tapped into when you were getting ready for the role? I mean, for sure. I, first of all, was not athletic. I have never been athletic. And my reaction when I get a script is the opposite of Ashley's. It's, do I have to dance? <laughs> so um, <laughs> so um, those things, although, you know, they're different from Rory, were other ways in which I felt different, right? Because a lot of girls I was around were maybe really sporty or athletic or whatever, but I always wanted to stand out and be different. And I was always looking for ways to, you know, make myself not part of the crowd as a young person. And so I, you know, wore a lot of wacky outfits and would do crazy stuff with my hair and eventually became a performer, which is another great way to stand out in the world. Um, so I related to her a lot in that she did not want to be quiet about her differences and she didn't feel ashamed of them at all. That's probably what I channeled from my childhood. It's always a priority at the Children's Theater to represent the dynamic community we live in, uh, and we want to re reflect that in casting, and we we were able to cast such a, a wonderful group of princesses. So did uh, anyone have some fan love from portraying your princess? Um, after one of the shows, I had a friend that was sitting in the balcony, um, and there was, she said there was a girl that was sitting like way in the back and at the beginning of princess school she sat like straight up 
and she was really loud and said, Elsa looks like me. <laughs> and that's like, that really got me because I never, like, I, I relate to that. I never thought that I would see a princess that looked like me. So it was really exciting that I got to be that for someone else. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, you know, in live theater, it's never the same show twice and things go wrong all the time. And it's our job as actors to make sure that the audience never knows when something goes wrong. Uh, can any of you think of a time during the show where maybe something didn't go as planned? And it probably wasn't very funny at the time, but now that you look back at it, y you can laugh. <laughs> yes, Lauren. <laughs> I preset my wig in a very particular spot, and I was like, okay, there, this is where my wig is, and this is where it will be. And in the show, we all had to do this really fast, quick change out of uh, godmothers to princesses and we all had to put on our wigs super fast it wasn't a lot of time and like the one of the, like the first tech rehearsal we're we're like running back there we're like changing and we're getting our wigs on and then all of a sudden like in the moment during the run my wig is like nowhere to the found and <laughs> like my impulse I immediately was like where's my wig where's my wig? And I said that, and I forgot at the beginning of rehearsal, like, don't talk backstage, because you never know when your mic's going to be on. And apparently, like, the minute I said that, it was during, like, the most perfect pause in dialogue, so everyone could hear me saying, where's my wig? So loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, was... Jordan. <laughs> Yeah, so like Lauren said, that change was super quick, putting on those wigs. And with Little Mermaid, she had that long red wig that was so beautiful. But during princess school, when we did the dip, we would always pull my wig and it would almost come off every single show. And by the time we went off stage, the lace in the front of the wig would be all the way back here and I looked like I had the biggest forehead. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, it's on every time though, so that's good. I never actually lost it, but it got scary sometimes. <laughs> Well, me and my blonde wig had our battles. It was very, very long. It was a full lasso length wig. And during one of the scenes, the bubbles come down right before me and they coat the floor and it's a beautiful moment for Princess Gerda. And, and then I have to come on and lasso my wig over to Jenna, Princess Rory, and I just wiped out on the bubbles, oh. wig just flat on the floor. <laughs> to explain, the bubbles are from the snow, and so it looks like snow, but it's really soap, and it's really slick. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, you wiped out. Oh, goodness. I'm so sorry. Oh, goodness. It seems that the general consensus is that we all had wig issues. <laughs> my hair is like always up or before or before this, my hair used to be like very short. So I've never had to deal with like hair swinging around at all. So that ponytail would always like... <laughs> Hit me sometimes in princess school, yeah, with my prince, uh, Sam, when we would do that lift, <laughs> sometimes my ponytail would get stuck, like his arm would, and I would, and I couldn't, like, my, have to keep my head back oh. so that my wig wouldn't rip off. <laughs> Oh, that dragon is amazing. It's so insane. And if you haven't watched it, you have to watch it. But it does not like apples. <laughs> Every time I tried to put the apple in its mouth, it would spit it back out at me. And I had so much trouble. That apple was actually very difficult. Michaela and I had problems with it too. <laughs> but I could not get the apple to stay in that dragon's mouth. It spit it back at me many times. It only needed a taste of the apple. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, knocked it right out. Oh, Michaela, did you have anything? Yeah, I, I mean, like Jenna pointed out, we that apple, I mean, it would, I'd throw it to Jenna at one point in the show, and I'm also not athletic in any way, shape, or <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. So, yeah, I just, it, it would, you know, maybe go a little higher than usual, and then she wouldn't catch it, or I would chuck it to the side, and she wouldn't catch it, and I'd feel so bad. Um, and then that changed before princess school. There was a time where I barely made it as the curtain was going like this. Like I, you could probably still see my feet like running the center <laughs> as the curtain's coming up. And I'm like, 
<laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, all these things always happen in live theater and it's kind of my favorite part of doing it. But of course. <laughs> yeah. Didn't the apple roll off the stage at one point? I did. Yeah. I did. <laughs> like somebody, like, like a kid in the front was like, here, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh, wow. So, okay. Finally, it'd be great to hear from each of you what you hope young girls and young, young boys will take away after watching Sleeping Beauty. Um, I mean, I'm so lucky to be alongside all these beautiful women. And I think it's so cool that we got to show kids that beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. And you don't have to be just one certain way to be a princess. You can be truly yourself and be the best princess that you can be. Yeah, I completely agree with Jordan. I think the fact that um, we as a princess ensemble showcased um, such beautiful representation for people of all skin colors, shapes, sizes, and beauty. And um, also George's character, just showing that even if you're a little boy and you're told to be a manly man, like you don't have to be, it's okay and you're perfect the way that you are. My favorite thing I think about this show is that all the princesses, we never um, had those stereotypical women fighting situations. Um, and at the very end, we're at the end of the show, we're all holding hands and like, no matter what, you're always going to be supported and encouraged by your female friends. I think that's a really good message to have, especially when this world kind of tells women to fight against each other. And I feel like with this show specifically, it just shows that we need to stick together to stay stronger. All right. Well, what I would want them to know is more of what Rory's character brought, that women can be strong and they can be tough and they can love chemistry and science and mathematics. And those are all things that I really value and, and that I hope that other girls like that can see that those are princess qualities too. I just hope that all people, young and old, who watch this show just can leave feeling excited about what makes them different. Um, and not ashamed, and that people will understand that the right people will um, love seeing you for who you really are. They won't want something else from you other than your true self. <laughs> it's, you know, as long as we're all safe and caring for one another and, and building each other up, there's no wrong way to be you. Ashley. Um, I hope that children take away from this show that, um, it's okay to just be yourself. And there's not um, certain qualities that you need to hide from others because you're afraid that they won't be acceptable or that people won't accept you. Um, I think I kind of learned that myself just through this whole audition process that being completely myself, even with all of my like tattoos and piercings and whatever color hair I had, <laughs> at the time when I was auditioning that um, exactly who I am is what you, you guys were looking for the whole time. So um, I think it's just really important that you, you might actually be pleasantly surprised by how um, others will embrace you when you're just uh, yourself from the beginning. And it takes all different types of people um, to keep the world turning, like people who are into the arts, people who sing and dance, people who are really into science and math. We need all of that. There's no one way to be a princess. There's no one way to be a manly man or a girly girl. So just being yourself is, is exactly what the world needs. I think everybody can agree that that is the thesis statement of the show. <laughs> it's a wonderful production that truly changed my life when I was able to produce it. And uh, it has been so wonderful to have a round table discussion with these princesses. And uh, we hope that we all see you at the tap very soon, don't we? Yes. yes. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for taking the time out of your quarantine day. Thank you. Thank you, bye. 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 Thank you. Awesome. That was wonderful, ladies. Yay. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.
It was good to see you guys. Uh, good, good to see you. Bye. Bye. Yes. See you. Bye. Definitely. Bye. 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 Bye.